All right, so anyway, I'm going to TLDR that. So under the hood bases a lot more than just phishing detection, phishing intelligence. We spit out between six and 20,000 uh, known to us phishing campaigns every day or phishing sites that we've identified as our part of our base early alert functionality. But we do a lot more than that. We behind the scenes process hundreds and hundreds of thousands of links every day. And one of the most valuable things that we do is we provide, and I'll just pivot into one of these just to show you. So let's just view this result. What we do, so this is a phishing site. It's associated with a campaign that we track. We spit out what we call observables, which we're going to rename to site fingerprints in the near future. But what these site fingerprints do, we're automatically calculating them on every single site that we have. But what they do is allow you to upload a site or send a link to base. And when the analysis happens, you're able to find all of the other sites over time that have matched that particular fingerprint. So we can say it's a search engine to find other sites that look like the site that you've submitted. So that can be useful for phishing, of course. We're using it in phishing. This is a campaign that's a phishing campaign. But it's useful for things like uh, C2 portal discovery, malvertising discovery, impersonation of your website discovery, um, legitimate sites, just finding other sites that look like a site that you're interested in, and so on. It's really, really powerful. And we do a lot of stuff. We're continuing to build more on top of that, but it's really the most powerful thing. So if you're familiar with like JA3, where you can fingerprint a TLS client, and maybe you can figure out it's associated with Cobalt Strike or whatever, we create fingerprints for a site so that you can identify, is this associated with a campaign that's phishing or malvertising or something else? So like I said, you can upload, uh, sorry, you can you could submit any site that you want just by analyzing a URL, type in one here, you can submit it, and then you can get back automatically, you'll get back that information that we just showed here, which are these observables. You can then pivot into any of these and find out what are all the other ones that look like that. I've seen this 31,000 times. Okay, so, so why did I just spend a bunch of time talking about this? Well, it's really useful for uh, a recent hunt that I did just off the top of the head. I, I found some results from somebody on Twitter that I thought were interesting, so I'm going to share that. Okay, so this was a post, I think this was maybe a week ago, and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna butcher uh, his name, but Herman Fernandez. So Herman, or uh, however you say his name, shared this information on Twitter with a whole bunch of indicators of compromise associated with targeting uh, a text that were targeting different kinds of, um, well, via malvertising different kinds of sites. And so what what I did, I, I searched a bunch of these in, in base to see, did we actually have any of this stuff yet? I don't think most of them had more than maybe one or two hits, so they weren't really, really interesting. But what we did, what, so I looked at this and kept looking through and looking, and so Herman shared more information. And then I saw this, uh, whoever this threat vigilant person is, shared a couple of other links that were interesting. So this is uh, TradingView was platforms that they found to be interesting. And you can see that I, I responded in this thread. So you can go check this thread out if you want to see it uh, dialed in. But what we're going to do is take this TradingView.com example, and I'm going to pivot over to base. And we're just going to search for it because it's almost certainly down by this point. I happen to have it handy here, so I'm going to just search for that. And we're going to see when was it first seen, when was it first searched, etc. So you can see uh, first searched a week ago. That's roughly when I think this Twitter thread went on. And what we have here is what else did we see? So let's spit the two weeks, two weeks, 
because we haven't analyzed it since it's been down. Uh, we, we have this result, we see trading view, and it's obviously misspelled. And so what you can notice here is if we go back over here, trading view desktop, the malicious malvertising site, when you go through the proper path. So for example, if Brett Vigilant had sent this information to us through the proper path, like submitted it as a URL to, to base uh, from the start, we would have gotten likely gotten that, uh, you know, this view, right? But we didn't, we didn't get that. So we happen to get, and apologies for the dog. We didn't get that path. We got a different path. The path that we got was this bogus uh, travel tips site. And so this travel tips site is probably completely bunk, probably just not a useful thing. We see that this site's 15 days old. So that's useful to know. Um, but interestingly, so even though this site may or may not on its own be malicious, what we're able to find out is we can find all the other sites that look like this one just by looking at the site fingerprints. So we'll come down here and first pivot on the structural ID. So the structural ID is the most precise match. And so we see that we saw it twice. Uh, back to September 1st. So let's go ahead and crank this puppy back and look back farther. And so we can see that older uh, site was metatrader.website. So we can pivot on that and see that, yes, in fact, it looks identical to this other one, right? You can see one interesting thing is the, the, uh, the image didn't load in one of these Things. This is one of the powerful things of the structural ID. We don't look at the precise content. We look at what's the structure of a site so that we can identify things that look the same, but are maybe not exactly pixel perfect identical. It's really valuable. It helps us to identify campaigns that are maybe a little bit different every time. Okay, so that was the pretty close to precise match, right? Let's look at our links ID, which is essentially says, let's take on a site and find all the other sites that look like or that have the exact same set of links. These aren't super unique links here. So you need to take a little bit of caution about whether or not you'll get something useful out of it, but it's definitely useful to look at them. So in this case, we see August 28th through September 14th, we see seen 10 times. So Technically, August 28th is still within our four week time range. So we should be able to see all of these. And we can see, we've got a handful of other results here. So here's that metatrader.website. Um, and then we see back farther on August 28th, we see uh, one in cd.com. And then you can see on September 1st, we see one in chc.com or one inch C. Don't know if they were named inch or not because the one in the one INC is the same here in both cases. But we can see that this has been around uh, for longer and we can see business line dash boi.com. We can look, you know, this is again, if you look at them, they're different, but they're extraordinarily similar. This is definitely the same template, uh, but it's not the exact same content. So we're able to identify that so it's very likely related to this campaign, just a little bit different. And so we can, actually, I don't think I've done this before. We can pivot on the structural ID here and see, do we actually have any others? Okay, so we didn't. We didn't have any others that looked like that one because again, the structural ID of that one was different. But what we can do is then look and see, you know, how far back did we first see that? Okay, that was first seen September 14th. What about metatrader.website? This one, we can see how far back did we see it? September 1st. How about the first one that we saw in this campaign? Let's pivot on that one. So that's one in cd.com. Okay, that was the first time we saw it. And then let's finally check the one 
inchc.com. That one goes all the way back to August 21st. At least that was the first time somebody searched for that in our platform. And you know, you can see now, I don't even know if the site's live anymore. You can see that it matches, it's a known phishing site, it matches uh, an indicator of compromise. I think this one actually comes from Fish Fort. Yep, so we ingest any uh, open source indicators of compromise that we judge to be high quality. This one was from Fishport, so thank you. They identified a site that was malicious that was associated with a phishing attack. So we pulled that in and we were able to identify that, but the site existed uh, before they were aware of that, very likely. I don't know if we'll be able to go, we won't be able to go all the way Man, we actually be close to going all the way back. We can see what we've got here to see when when did they start identifying it as an IOC. Let's see if we can go back farther. Okay, August 27th. Let's see if we can get back all the way to the beginning. Nope. Okay. So we didn't quite see if they had already identified it at the beginning, uh, August 24th or August 21st rather, but we did identify that uh, all the way through October or August 27th, they did in fact identify it as uh, an indicator of compromise. So at the very least, what we did was we extended the campaign to identify the one in cd.com and this metatrader.website.com or metatrader.website and this business online boi.com. So we took something where you know we came from a couple of these links and then we expanded out to identify even more sites that actually were a part of this campaign uh, where we were able to find things that other people weren't aware of. So again, just the value of going from some site that somebody submitted and finding all of the other sites that look like it or are uh, using the same links associated with it. So that's where we'll stop with that one, but let's go into another scenario. So unless you live under a rock, if you're in the security community, you've heard about Splunk being acquired today, probably for their monthly bill, uh, as the joke is going around right now. But let's just look, look and see, just in the last day, do we see any results that have Splunk in the name? And I looked a little bit earlier and I didn't see anything useful. Everything was older, but let's just check, just in case something's come in since I checked. Okay, so this should just be looking at the last day. And I'm just gonna get rid of some of these other tabs. Okay, so we still have just the same three results. You can see that they were last searched today. One of these was me a little bit earlier, but they've all existed for much longer. So they're very likely not at all related to a campaign against Splunk. And obviously two of these are actually Splunk. Uh, so we're, we're not going to waste our time digging into those. It seems like it's a, a loose end. But let's also just really quickly check the term trading because we pivoted from a... And we're going we're gonna to spell it right. Let's see if we can search across the last week. So... We again, we pivoted from over here where we were talking about trading, uh, trading view being a, a used malvertising campaign that looked to compromise people that were searching Google for uh, trading view platform. So let's just come back here and see what we've had. Now, obviously, we searched for the word trading, it's a very broad term, there's going to be lots of different results, but let's see if anything looks like it might be trading view. So we just look through these. I'm not seeing anything yet. Did 
just the legitimate tradingview.com. Let's check one more. Actually, I'm going to, sorry to swing around the screen. I'm going to pivot on this one just to see something. And then I'm going to uh, see if we can load the next set of results. So first thing, just wanted to look and see, did we have anything recently? So we end up at www.tradingview.com, but in this case, the tradingview dot, uh, Chinese last name dot workers dot dev is here. So we see that there's some interesting stuff here and we can maybe stay with that in a second let's just check back here see if there's anything else <clears throat> so they're all what look like the legitimate sites okay so it looks like there wasn't anything interesting there let's just come back over here so we can see that this was seen on a bunch of different sites so we can find out I have no idea what these look like, but we can find out if any of these are interesting. So we've got a couple of them. Star gold, check. Okay, so that's the first one. That one looks interesting. That one, don't know. TBD, same with the system. System doesn't know for sure either. And then the third one, uh, Again, don't know. So remember, what we pivoted from back here was just is www.tradingview.com seen on a site. So it doesn't mean that we're impersonating the site in this case, although it could be possible. So this globalmultifunds.com, we can find out a little bit of information about that one. We can look at the Let's pivot on that. Okay, so that's completely unique. That's completely unique. So that would need to be dug into more. So TBD on that one. Let's look at this one where the system didn't think that there was anything bad. Let's see if we see any others that look like it. Okay, so that's unique. Let's see, we've got... Okay, a bunch of references to whalecrew.com. So let's just pivot on that. That's unique. Okay, this one, we saw the exact same set of destinations once in July and once in September. Although, unfortunately, the, the July date is too far back, so we haven't we don't have a good way to go and see that, but we at least see it twice, so that would at least raise my suspicion that this one's maybe a little bit more interesting. One thing that we can look at and see is, have we seen any of the parents? Uh, this is actually just at the the third level. So we pages.dev is above that, but we haven't, sometimes there's four layers of destinations, uh, subdomains. And so this one, we don't have a fourth, uh, a fourth layer. So we don't, we don't get to find that. If you want a little bit more detail on that, we've published a blog with like, um, with who is XML API. And we did a webcast too, I think that talks about how we identified a bard and then a whole bunch of other uh, related AI tool impersonations that were hosted on workers.dev or pages.dev, same uh, company, um, just by looking at the root uh, hosting from the Cloudflare site. So dig into that. I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. Last one, <clears throat> top sfxminers24.com. So one why did we identify it as something that's interesting zero days old when it was analyzed and it looks like there's a handful of unnamed fields that were added so we didn't identify it was collecting passwords or anything uh, and not explicitly but we identified that there were other fields that were collected that didn't have a name at least not a name that we recognized so let's see this was yesterday 
let's just see what else we have in here. See if we can pivot and find anything else. Okay, so that's unique. What about this one? That one's unique. And that one's unique. Okay, so this might just be either not a campaign or maybe it's a new one that doesn't yet have other examples of it or they're or it could be not malicious. The fact that the site is pretty new and targeting some pretty interesting stuff would certainly make me want to dig a little bit deeper. So we've got that. Let's see. The last thing that I wanted to share was maybe just digging a little bit deeper. So this isn't part of the, the UI yet, but it's something that we're going to add as time goes on, but we have functionality that allows you to, uh, that in the back end says, okay, we have our high confidence phishing uh, information that gets spit out into our base early alert intelligence feed, but we also have functionality where we have low, medium, and high confidence phishing, and we identify things that are low confidence as things that maybe we didn't identify a brand, or we didn't know that credentials were being collected, or we didn't identify a handful of other things that would cause us to increase our score to medium and high. So those are really, really ripe for finding campaigns that are not yet known uh, by the, the public, but are identified as a campaign by base. So these are really, really rich places to search for new high volume or even just any kind of volume campaigns. So I'm going to pivot into our Slack really quick and just show an example of what that looks like. So something where we're ultimately going to make this available in a more consumable way on our website for, for paying customers um, that sign up just for base investigator or UI, but this is still useful. So I'm just going to ignore that. And what we have here is this was one that I saw a little bit earlier that caught my eye. We try to spit this out to make it at least somewhat useful for people who are looking at this a little bit more closely than me. And so we've got the link ID, which is the uh, the link ID that we saw just a minute ago. And so we see that this was first seen in uh, a recent period, 1130 today. And we see that the first time that we saw that link ID, that uh, site fingerprint for the links, first time we saw it was 9-6, so September 6th, and at least just now. And we have, you know, sample of different URLs. So we can see that there's two different ones here. Uh, one says slash dog slash mom and one that says sg dash grab. And so we can actually see one of those results at uh, in base to see what, what do they look like. So we can pivot and we see, hey, this looks like something that might be interesting. You know, log in for e-banking and so we see that parameters, text, and password were collected and sent to this uh, user.php script on the same site. And you can see here we, we started with slash dog slash mom and ended up again with that user.php. And we see the destination, uops, blah, 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 codeanyapp.com. Let's see, do we have any other uh, things that would match this? So let's look at the observables or site fingerprints. All right, so we're gonna pivot on just those two. So structural ID was the first one. So the essence of the site, have we seen any other ones? Looks like September through September 21st. And what are some of the other ones that we've seen? So we, we have the UOPS one, we have OPO. These look like the same. And then what else do we have? We have Pegasev .io. So that looks different. It looks like it leads to the same site. And let's see, it looks like they're the ones that for sure are different. And again, we can pivot on any of these and find that they look, yep, very much the same. So again, what we did was we pivoted from something that had, uh, this was low confidence phishing, but it was identified as phishing nonetheless. We went to look at base and we identified, hey, there's actually a campaign associated with this. So now we can add some of the indicators that we've seen here. We could either add campaign itself 
and make that available in our campaign. Or as a even a lighter weight thing we can do is we see that we have this login dot uh, refi ch which I'm sure I butchered the name, we could add that as knowledge into our system that would allow us to track any time that that was seen by uh, our system. And that would be useful in helping to elevate those to be higher scored. So we can look at those and see, hey, this has actually been seen 384 times in the last several months. And we've got lots of different examples of them seem to be matching the campaign that we just looked at just check a second page yeah so the last week they pretty much all match the exact same thing yep so okay i think this is probably a good place to to leave off for today we dove through a whole bunch of different things but the the big takeaway to have here is when you have a site that you think is interesting whether it's malvertising phishing whatever Submit it to base through the analyze the URL functionality, and you'll be able to get back the results of that and be able to pivot into those observables, eight fingerprints, and identify all of the other sites that look like it. So you can essentially use it as a search engine to find other sites. And if you have something like uh, a site that's really aimed for automated crawlers, but you have the actual content of it, you can go to our upload page and you could submit, you can click choose file and upload an HTML file and it'll give you those observables back again that you can pivot into and find uh, all of the matching results. So really, really great tool for threat research and threat intelligence to find all the other sites that look like yours and expand out the campaign to identify, hey, this is actually not just an isolated occurrence and here's how we can identify the rest. All right, I hope you've learned something. Hopefully you can share this with other people. And if you have any feedback for future, please uh, let me know. And I, and I just saw that there's a ton of questions and I really need to uh, follow up on those. So thank you so much. I will, uh, I, I didn't expect so many questions. Uh, so thanks for the folks from KSE that joined and anybody else that uh, is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Elias, nice to, nice to see you. And again, uh, I'll, I'll reach out and respond to some of these uh, outside of our current uh, time. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care.